You should see the frequency response of these amplifiers. Now this is a circuit diagram. You should see the frequency response of this CS amplifier. So in the previous videos we have seen this is the equivalent circuit. Uh, so we have replaced this floating uh, capacitor between uh, the output and the input to the CGD by uh, C1, C2 on the either side. So this is the capacitance associated with the MOSFET. So now you can see this is a C1, C2, so which is a uh, equivalent of uh, uh, the CGD. So C1 is given by the expression CGD into 1 minus AV and uh, C2 is given by uh, CGD into 1 plus uh, 1 over AV. Now why it is plus means because for the CS amplifier V2 by V1 that is the output voltage by input voltage is minus GM into RD. So that's why this uh, is minus becoming the plus here and uh, similarly C2 is given by this. And we have uh, all the uh, capacitors and resistors of the circuit being represented uh, in the equivalent circuit as uh, so and so. So this is the input voltage and this is our source associated with the source uh, signal and this is the coupling capacitor. This is the RN which is the equivalent of R1 parallel R2. C in is the combination of CGS and uh, uh, C1. This CGS plus C1 happens to be C in and uh, this is C2 which is written here and RD. So we know uh, C in is given by the parallel combination that is uh, C1 plus uh, CGS and uh, whereas uh, and we'll see okay how does uh, the circuit will be modified so at low frequencies so at low frequencies we know that the capacitance will offer very high uh, impedance uh, so because the impedance offered by the capacitors are large so you can see now we had a RS here now since the capacitance offered by CC is far greater than RS we are not considering the RS because in series if you have uh, 100 ohm and 100 K we will not consider 100 ohm so likewise so we are not considering the series uh, resistance here so coming to this capacitance uh, which is C in which was there in parallel with uh, R in so uh, since here also since uh, at low frequencies the reactance offered by the C in is very large, so which is very large compared to R in. So we had this uh, uh, C in which was in part with R in. The reactance offered by C in is very large. Now when we have two resistors which are parallel and one is very high and the other one is low, so we will certainly retain the lower one and we are neglecting the capacitance that is C in. So that's why neglect the source uh, uh, impedance that is R source and C in. So we can see now uh, the equivalent circuit reduces to this form and we are neglecting um, the capacitor which is C2 over here. If we can carefully observe this particular equivalent circuit, so does it not resemble the high pass filter what we discussed in the uh, previous uh, videos. So this is exactly the representation of the high pass filter. Now we, are, we also know that the frequency response of the high pass filter is uh, uh, having uh, what? So at, at lower frequencies it will not pass the signal and at higher frequencies it is not passing. So we have a corresponding cutoff frequency F1 represented for this uh, CS amplifier. So now this F1 is due to the coupling capacitor CC and the RN. So this uh, first cutoff frequency of the frequency response of the CS amplifier is due to the coupling capacitor CC and the input impedance RN which is a parallel combination of R1 and R2. Uh, at lower frequency CS amplifier behaves like a high pass filter. So let us see how does uh, the equivalent circuit look like when the frequency of the input is very large. So when the frequency of the input is large the equivalent circuit reduces to now we can see so at higher frequency the reactance offered by uh, the capacitance are small. Now compared to the of course we had a capacitance here. So compared to the reactance offered by the capacitor, so this R source is more. So that's why we are neglecting uh, the coupling capacitor. So now we can see we are neglecting the lower value of the uh, lower value of uh, CC because its impedance uh, that is offered by CC is very small. So compared to this R source, we are neglecting CC. Similarly, we are neglecting R in because the R in is offering uh, very large impedance compared to the C in. That's why. So as uh, C in is, as the reactance offered by C in is smaller, we tend to retain the smaller one. And uh, here you can see we are, we are retaining both the C2 and uh, RD because this will represent a 
low pass filter this is uh, the equivalent circuit at higher frequencies you can carefully observe here so this resistor and this capacitor here will going to form look like a low pass filter and this is also a representation of a low pass filter the entire equivalent circuit will look like a cascade of two low pass filters one is having a frequency due to this r and this c that is r source and r c and other low pass filter is having a cutoff frequency which is being represented by rd and c2 now you can see this is the frequency response uh, at higher frequencies that is uh, represented by uh, frequency response here now you can see this is at mid band so as you increase the frequency now you can see this start reducing uh, this is a first cutoff frequency f2 and uh, the roll off will be minus 20 db per decade so when we further increase the frequency there is one more law one more roll off coming so there is a uh, one more cutoff frequency which is f3 now as we can see now so since we have two uh, low pass filters connected in cascade so this f2 is due to the r source and scene this f3 the capacitance sorry the uh, cutoff frequency f3 is due to this rd and c2 so since this f2 is smaller compared to f3 we always call this as a, a dominant pole because the bandwidth is decided by this f2 so when f2 is smaller than f3 if the frequency response of a cs amplifier is having uh, if, if this is due to f3 and if this is due to f2 then f3 will act like a uh, dominant pole now we'll just come back and see how does the overall frequency response of a cs amplifier looks like now this is uh, the representation of the cs amplifier frequency response at uh, lower frequencies as you can see at the lower frequencies it looks like a high pass filter so in, in the mid band frequencies the gain is almost constant the effective capacitance will not be felt at frequencies from 10 kilohertz to almost close to 100 or 200 kilohertz so that's why the gain is almost constant so it might work like a high pass filter or uh, a low pass filter it will want to pass all the signals in this uh, range we call it as mid band if you increase the frequency uh, there is one cutoff frequency due to the r source and scene and there is one more cutoff frequency which is due to the c2 and uh, the rd so this way we are going to get the overall frequency response of a zs amplifier we are going to have three cutoff frequencies that is f1 at a low frequency there is a second cutoff frequency at a bit higher frequencies which is f2 and this is f3 so at higher frequency at higher frequencies whichever comes first we call it as the dominant pole and this is not dominant the overall bandwidth is given by f2 minus f1 because now it is 3 db down because at 3 db down we are going to have a half power point the frequency difference uh, corresponding to half power point happens to be the bandwidth of your CS amplifier.